Hello, this is Bronwyn Ailey, Local Food Systems and Small Farms Educator for the University of Illinois Extension. For this segment of Local Food Happenings at DSAC, we're going to hear from Julie Zakes, Ag Gardener housed at the Dixon Springs Ag Center, as she discusses growing mushrooms uh, during the winter in a high tunnel. Julie has several years' experience in mushroom production as she worked with Jeff Kindhart on previous mushroom research projects that were located at Dixon Springs. Hi, I'm Julie Zakes from the Dixon Springs Ag Center in Southern Illinois, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit today about uh, what I'm trying to do uh, for season extension in one of our high tunnels. I'm dabbling and growing some mushrooms. Um, when Jeff Kindhart was here several years ago, we Oh, we grew some white buttons, some portabellas successfully in the high tunnel, a few wine caps, and then um, we did oysters and bags in a different spot. And I'm sort of continuing on with that and seeing, uh, seeing what I can do. Um, we've got a greens grant right now in another high tunnel, and I'm sort of tired of the greens, so I'm wanting to do something else and see if mushrooms will work. So I'm doing it very, very low tech, um, trying not to spend a lot, just... and doing it as easy as I can. I'm, I'm not wanting to spend a lot of money and I'm wanting to use what I have as best I can. So um, first things first, we've got permanent raised beds in our high tunnel. Um, so I'm using that and the soil that we had in here for the summer, we went ahead um, and dug that out. And luckily enough, I have horses at home. So I've got compost at home, which Technically, I have more manure at home. We, we've not composted it in the, in the sense that most commercial mushroom places would, you know, compost it to get it up to temperature and that. So I brought that in, and luckily enough, I've got a steamer to where I can pasteurize it. Um, so we filled our beds, we've pasteurized it, and then I basically tried to keep it clean and everything until I was able to inoculate it. So as you can see, I've got some weed mat over it and that also keeps it dark, keeps any weeds from growing that might have come in. Um, so we're lucky enough, um, I'd contacted one of the places that sells mushroom spawn and they donated um, quite a bit of spawn to us, some white button and portabella again. and. We got that in and it's got to be kept cold and again we're lucky we've got a cooler here so we've been able to keep the spawn at 40 degrees until I was ready to use it. And I was hoping to get my beds in a little bit before this because it was it was really great temperature in November. We had 70 degrees it would have been a really good time to get it in but we had some issues going trying to get the summer stuff out of here, trying to get the compost in and all that so we're a little bit late putting it in so we've had some challenges with temperature so we're a little bit behind where we'd have liked to been. Okay so when I started thinking about doing mushrooms again this year I found this online um, and ordered it. It's the handbook for commercial mushroom growers from Penn State. Um, Pennsylvania is pretty much the mushroom capital of the world so um, there's a lot of great stuff in this book. Um, a lot of it's way over my head. A lot of it's pretty useful though. Um, so they have a lot of recommendations in there. They have a huge section on composting. Um, and I do believe you could probably, like I said, I have a steamer. I'm lucky. I think if you were able to work your compost at home and get it up to the proper temperature and actually check on it, you could probably get away with that or at least try it um, without steaming it and other ways too i mean it does recommend you don't have to have a cooler to store your spawn we've kept it in refrigerators before it all works so like i said low, low tech this this book goes into great detail if you want to really get into it and start a mushroom growing facility otherwise you can sort of dumb it down like i did and use bits of it and try to incorporate it into something that i've really just not seen a lot of other people doing so i'm just sort of winging it and seeing seeing what i can do <laughs> so um but i did use this to look at for like spawn rates to see how much i should use in my beds um okay. so again um just a little bit more with the bed prep before i decided to um, mix in the spawn i tilled my compost first 
uh, twice actually before I steamed it because a lot of it was actually pretty chunky. Um, so I'd steamed it, tilled it, steamed it, and before I decided to mix in my spawn, I made sure that it was really wet because I didn't want to add the spawn and then have to wet it so soon afterwards. And I think they recommend that it should be about 60 to 70 percent moisture in your beds. So I'm I'm guessing at, at what that was honestly. So um, commercial growers use quartz still as a unit of measurement for how much spawn you use. I guess it dates back to when they used to grow spawn, they grew it in quart jars. So that's the measurement that they use. So I found a quart container to actually measure out my spawn. Um, so I went through, I've got an 80 foot bed and I measured it into five foot plots. I have white button mushrooms and then I have a portobello strain. So I have eight plots of each and the spawn rates vary greatly on what they recommend. So they say some growers use a quart for like five square feet of bed. Some say, you know, you can use a quart for 60 square feet of bed. So I divided mine and I did a pint, which I think ended up weighing three quarters of a pound for a pint. So I did um, eight beds with a pint of the two varieties. And then I did eight, I'm sorry, eight plots with a quart so that would be a pound and a half of spawn um, and it's it's quite a lot it doesn't sound like a lot but it, it's it's a lot when you sprinkle it in so I just sprinkled it in and then I have a really neat tool here that's just sort of a little garden cultivator that I actually went through and sort of mixed it in because you can just broadcast it on top but it'll take much longer uh, to colonize so the more that you can sort of mix it in the faster the mycelium will spread and the faster it'll go and of course I, I sanitize that the best I could at first and then once you put it all down then you just sort of want to pat it down you don't want a lot of air pockets in there so uh, let's see so you can tell a little bit the differences in my beds here you can see where I've used a quart it's spread a little bit more and then the pint is behind it you can see it's not quite colonized the bed quite as much and it's, it's going a bit slower than it should. Again, the temperature has been a little bit crazy. We've had nights around freezing, days around 50, 60, and then the high tunnel with it being shut up probably gets to still about 75, 80, which is about 75 is a really good temperature uh, for your spawn to run. But then with the cold nights, like I said, I think it's set it back a little bit, but it's doing, it's doing pretty good. Um, a typical spawn run I think should be like 14 to 21 days so I'm figuring if we double that then I'm still pretty happy with that it'll be okay. Uh, so you can sort of see in this bed you can see on the sides I sprinkled it uh, pretty much down the center because I didn't want to dribble a lot off the edges so you can see on the sides where the mycelium has not spread and you can see really good here where it is forming and spreading throughout and it's getting a little bit dry here so it's getting a little bit crumbly and you can see in certain spots where it's getting really firm which that means it's running through there really well and that's what we want so it's it's doing much better with the quart here I don't know how it'll do overall if it'll make a huge difference in the overall yield but it's definitely running faster which might be a good thing for this time of the year depending on how cold it's going to get if you have more time and better temperatures less might be okay so but this is definitely probably going to need a little bit of water today we've had a couple of really warm days and it's it's sort of tricky i'm i tend to want to be one to over water a lot and this only needs it probably this time of year maybe once every seven or eight days so I'm really trying to restrain <laughs> from overwatering it. And then of course the weed mat helps keep some moisture in. And I've got row cover on for the cold nights too. And now when this, when the mushrooms start to come, I've actually got to build a low tunnel over it because I don't, I don't think the mushrooms are going to want a fruit touching the weed mat. So that's going to be my next project is building something that I can move easily to get under to pick them, but still keep them covered and keep the moisture in. 
We will be sharing more video updates from this project as it progresses through the winter, so be sure to check back with us. Until next time, be well and stay safe.